If you have ever done a DNA test and you get the results back and then you're thinking, what in the world do I have? I have the guy here who can explain it all to you just super, super clear. I'm joined today with Blaine Bettinger, who is the author of the Family Tree Guide to DNA Testing and Genetic Genealogy. Blaine, explain it to us. <laughs> it's like, where to begin? So let's, let's say that since I, I think the test that most people are familiar with would be the Ancestry DNA test. Right. They get the results back and there's that fun little ethnicity estimate and now right. we have the genetic communities right. and we have a gajillion matches. What in the world do we do? Well, first of all, what I would say is definitely the ethnicity. Take it with a grain of salt. Look at the continental level. Don't worry so much about the countries and the regions because those just aren't going to be all that accurate. Look at for how much European, how much African, how much Asian, things like that. Those are the categories that tend to be more correct. Okay. For me, though, that's general interest. You're not going to make any big genealogical breakthroughs if you know you're 98% European or something like that. Yeah, you know? that, that's so, like no big surprise right, to me. Yeah. Right. Um, look at your genetic communities. Genetic communities are one of my favorite new things in genetic genealogy. They are incredibly, in my experience, they've been incredibly accurate. Um, they give you ideas about your ethnicity that are better than your ethnicity estimate. Oh, okay. um, and they they give you clues now if you know a lot about your genealogy they're probably going to line up with what you already know but if you don't if you have significant brick walls look at your communities because they might actually give you clues about where to look they're sort of going to be pointing pointing you in the right direction they're not going to give you the records but they're going to point you in the right direction so they're very helpful okay. um, so those are kind of the the overview but once you what you really want to do is you want to dig into your matches okay. and you always want to start with your closest matches first now People like to go in, they like to search for surnames they have or places, but start off by looking at your closest matches. Hopefully you're gonna have at least third cousins or closer. Many people these days have second cousins, uh, sometimes first cousins they didn't know tested. Look at those individuals, look at their trees, Okay. See if you can figure out places and names in common and see if you can figure out how they're related to you. And then if you can figure it out, contact them. Say, hey, I share this line. Would you like to share information? Because that, that's really what this is all about is making connections, working collaboratively with other genealogists that we can work through our brick walls. We can share information. I've heard great stories about people finding pictures of family members that they didn't know existed until they made connections through the DNA with these families, which is just incredible to me. So I recommend start digging through your close matches first yeah so so just kind of go systematically start with the closest ones and then just keep keep working your way back at what point though do you find that maybe it's not really worth it does there come a point where it's not really worth contacting them because you're it's it's too far back yeah you know that's it's sort of something that the community the the field is still developing at what point is a segment no longer significant meaning at what point is a segment 20 generations ago where you're never going to find a record that links you together and you know uh, for me I generally focus on at least sharing with individuals of 20 centimorgans or more okay. below that I'm you're starting to get into the range where it could be so distant you're gonna have a hard time that doesn't mean you need to ignore all those distant matches mm -hmm. um, and you know this is probably Probably a little bit beyond the fourth cousin range or so if you have a list of fourth cousins and closer those are the people you should be focusing on after that you need to use extreme caution working with the rest of those matches excellent and you used a word that I think we we throw out a lot in in genetic genealogy and that is a centimorgan right Tell everybody what a centimorgan is. A centimorgan is actually <laughs> incredibly difficult to explain because it actually has more Which to is do why about. I'm asking you to ah, explain. well, perfect, it. Yeah. perfect. <laughs> has more to do with the the um, chance of recombination occurring between two points on a chromosome. Okay. But what we can think of it as is is really, for most genealogists, we can think of it as a ruler. Okay. It's a ruler of DNA segments. It's a ruler that measures how long a piece of DNA is that you share with another person. Okay. So in your head, you can think when we're saying centimorgans, don't confuse it for centimeters or anything like that. But it's in a way, it's a measurement of length that we use. Okay. And, and that's, a, that's good enough information for 99.9% .9 of genealogists to know. Yes, yeah, since we're not going to become, you know, that's genetic right. biologists Right, or exactly, we exactly. We think of it as a, yes. as a length of measure. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So, even though Ancestry DNA is the one that people are most familiar with, what other, what other tools can, can we use if we've taken, say, an Ancestry DNA test? 
Um, Ancestry is giving us some tools on their website, but is there anything else that we can do with the results from Ancestry to find out even more? Right, so there's actually a lot of things you can do with results from various companies at the current time. So for example, if you've tested at Ancestry, transfer your raw data to Family Tree DNA, which is free. Transfer your raw data to MyHeritage, which is currently free. And you can also use third-party tools. Like, for example, GEDmatch is the largest third-party tool. It has more than half a million people who have uploaded their raw data to GEDmatch. So if you've tested, for example, at one company and not the others, what GEDmatch does is allows you to do some cross-company comparison to other people from other co um, companies that have uploaded there as well. Um, and it's sort of, you know, the best thing for you to do is test at all the companies. But that starts to add up financially. Yeah. Um, so if you can't do that, then you can use a tool like GEDmatch to catch some of those matches you're missing. Excellent, excellent. And, and I think that you bring up a, a good point that even though Ancestry DNA is the largest, there are these other testing companies like Family Tree DNA and like MyHeritage that, you know, they don't have quite as many people yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, uh, and I, I don't know if it's you or somebody that, that makes the case that it helps to fish in all of the ponds. Right, right, you know, yes. Yeah, that, I didn't coin that phrase. I use it often, but you're absolutely right. I joke that the match you need the most is going to be at the last company you test. Of um, and so that, that <laughs> appears to be my luck. Um, but uh, so you want to be in all the ponds if you can, because that's going to increase the likelihood that you get a, a match you really could use to help break through that brick wall. Um, you know, all the companies have challenges. Ancestry DNA is extremely large, but there are a lot of people there that are not um, genealogists. Mm -hmm. They're testing only for, say, ethnicity purposes, which is good. It captures a ton of new people, and we can, we as genealogists, can help transition them into um, becoming genealogists. Right. Right. Um, well, on the other hand, people at Family Tree DNA tend to be more hardcore genealogists, mm -hmm. which means they're going to have more information, they're more likely to respond. People at 23andMe, the database is enormous, but there, a lot of them are medical testing. So okay. there's pros and cons, and if, just get yourself in all those ponds and then, you know, hope for the best. And it, a lot of times it works out. Excellent. If you had one piece of advice to give to someone who's considering doing a DNA test, they, they've heard that it's great and it's wonderful, but they don't know where to turn, what's one piece of advice that you would give to them? What I would say is if you are seriously considering doing testing, one thing to realize is that the test is never going to replace traditional genealogical research. So the more tree information you have before you test, the better off you're going to be when you actually test. That doesn't mean you need to have it when you jump in. But when you jump in, what you need to realize is if you really want to wring every bit of possible information out of your DNA test results, mm -hmm. at some point you're going to have to add it and supplement it with a tree. The great thing is there are incredible resources for this mm -hmm. everywhere. Everywhere you look, there are people and your matches. Hit up your matches for help. Your matches, I guarantee you, will want to help you build a tree because that benefits them. Right. The more people that have trees, the better off we all are. So when you test, if you're thinking about testing, start your tree now. Um, it doesn't need to be a big tree. It can talk to your living relatives. Get your tree started because I guarantee you when you get your DNA results back, you're the first thing you're going to think is, boy, I, I wish I had a tree to, to help figure this out. Yeah. So that's, that's some great advice. Blaine, thank you so much again. Thank you. Blaine's book is The Family Tree Guide to DNA Testing and Genetic Genealogy. Excellent, excellent book. And if people want to find out more about you and all the awesome things that you're doing, where can they find you? They can find me at uh, thegeneticgenealogist.com. And I just started a new Facebook group called Genetic Genealogy Tips and Techniques that I, I think uh, people would find useful. Excellent. And I will put links to his website and his awesome Facebook group in the show notes so you can check those out as well. Again, I'm Amy Johnson-Crow. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you again later. Thank you.